It's very sad to find that even unborn child today is still exposed to plastic. As the world becomes increasingly industrialized, many people have turned their backs on traditional ways of life. Nature is often viewed as a hindrance to progress and the environment is often sacrificed in the pursuit of more money and convenience. Some people, however, still believe humans must collaborate with nature to survive. One such person is Queen Elizabeth, an environmental advocate officer of the Arocha Kenya organization. My name is Queen Elizabeth and I work with Arocha Kenya. I am an environmental education officer. The 18th of January, we had a conference of all environmental educators in our Arocha organization and the theme was Plastic Free February. And after the conference, we went to action and I, uh, together with my team on environmental education, we've been creating awareness to communities and even students, we're getting the whole school together with the teachers, have a talk of about 15 minutes, but you keep on emphasizing going plastic free. So during the time we were campaigning for plastic free February, we visited the areas of Roca and uh, we met the Hassan Chimbamba. He was among us, the audience that was there, and he was proud to say that he is proudly collecting plastic from the ocean as he knows that he is um, creating a way for the future generation because plastic has been a disaster. And we celebrate him as our plastic hero from the campaign that we had. And I'm here to say congratulations to Mze Hassan Chimbamba. I was really touched with his story and I feel that Kenya needs to hear about such a thing now coming together, um, getting a solution for plastic free. So how are plastic connected to climate change? When we are manufacturing plastic, from crude oil, we get to products like kerosene gas and uh, um, like petroleum. So from that we get to nardos. This is a plastic pellet, a very small plastic pellet that is like a building block for plastic. So it's from burning, we get uh, to get the greenhouse gases and all that. And uh, the greenhouse gases, you can say it is the, like uh, the start point of why it's hot and all that. So like the earth is suffocated, the earth is suffocated and the earth is choked. So like we, the population, right now let's just take the top of kenya if you get something like this you can this was a the five liter jerry can but it just broke into a small uh, piece of it so it's from such a block it's you get it breaks into small that we call microplastic so you can imagine how long does it take for such a material to decompose these are like more than a hundred years to come so uh, very many plastics we have 50 years ago they are still existing and it's very very sad to find that it will stay here and you find that from here through runoff it finds itself in the ocean so the effect of what it does to the ocean the species that are inside their biodiversity they get to ingest it and it suffocates them it blocks their uh, digestion tract and all that and if you think your unborn child is safe from all this, you're greatly mistaken. According to Queen Elizabeth, using plastic paper or kitchenware may harm even your future generation. It's very sad to find that even unborn child today is still exposed to plastic. Why? Through the food chain, it's the same same fish that we eat who ingested plastic in the ocean. So after we ingest it, say by accumulation, it gets into our tissues and it's very sad when we talk about it and you don't get to feel it, you don't care about it, but I always say it's until that time you are in that shoe, like you're experiencing that time. Just an example, you just develop a small boil behind your back, you're, you're in that shoe, okay? You go to the hospital, two weeks, five weeks, it's announced to you that you're suffering from cancer. It's from bioaccumulation 
the small bits of chemicals that you've been ingesting till that time like it's announced that you have cancer and then now if you have to look for some funds so that you can be treated that is when you come to realize what was really happening so i advocate for if you're hearing this kindly is there a way you can avoid plastic you can reuse you can prepare you can recycle but is there a way you can try to avoid it at all Climate change is happening and there are no two ways about it. Queen is doing everything she can to fight climate change and save humanity from its devastating consequences. Just to share my story, I as an advocate, I do advocacy. Um, I said I'll start with uh, my own story on whatever I feel, the passion that I have, and whatever I know and I understand what plastic is doing to our environment. And I'm proudly here to share my story on how I went for a transformation with my hair. I have been doing plastic braids for a very long time. But then with the plastic campaign, I decided to go plastic free. And I thank, I thank God for the leaders who came along. And we had the United National Environmental Assembly that was happening in Kenya from 28th of February to 2nd of March, whereby leaders and even the manufacturers like the oil and all these uh, uh, owners of these businesses are coming now together towards we sitting and agreeing solution towards the whole menace and whole disaster so if you're hearing about this if you get to read in magazines if you get to hear stories about it with such interesting story of such an old person um, the Hassan who is doing this I feel it's a very good thing and yeah you can build your story what is your challenge towards the world in that time and so you said you are doing a, what was it again we are creating awareness uh -huh. how many places did you go right now um like the whole of last year we've been creating awareness to eight schools so approximately you find in these eight schools there are environmental clubs so in every club there is around 40 students but for the campaigns plastic we were targeting like the whole school so even the teachers the cooks and we've also been going to villages so to the villages we are co uh, coordinating with the chief so we get like barrazos so we we let them know about it and even the chiefs uh, complement the uh, talks the plastic talks with even about waste management it is true that too i found myself in radio stations and whereby some of the radio stations they catch up to the uh, audience is up to 600,000. So you can imagine that impact of sharing what's your story about plastic. I find it to be very um, motivating. And do you think poverty is the cause of all this? Um, poverty. Yeah, they are really like. Let, let, let me take it into a point of uh, a woman who sells uh, fried potatoes every day for maybe community members she gets she gets to buy that thinks that this is the best way maybe is using a plastic bag like whatever was planned but some people still use it so you find that it's still threatening that little kid who still eats that plastic bag after taking all those yeah, karai and then still ingest the whole plastic and then yeah i can say like poverty because at the end of that i am rest i'll keep on talking of if you get to the knowledge and then you get to really understand and for me i can say rather than seeing it on the poverty level i'm looking at it also in the in terms of embracing economy on how we're gonna be uh innovative and as a solution towards this for the youth how did you feel when you met him ah, i felt so good i celebrate muse hassan chimbamba he's a hero he is a shuja for kenya for whatever he does and i was really motivated about his work when he 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 cleans the, the beach, uh, like yeah, like people need to know about this. It's just that small thing, but uh, for him this is big. He stayed here for 30 years. He's been doing this. He's been farming, yes, but he also cleans the beach. So he is a conservationist. He is a hero, and we can say like everyone could be responsible. Whatever the Chembamba does, everyone gets to do that small thing. Where will we be? So I celebrate Mze Chembamba and he is my hero. Yeah, plastic free hero. 
According to research, plastic leaves are fit to legacy in our oceans, serving as the world's most overseas natural carbon sink, with approximately 14 million tons of plastic ending up in the ocean yearly, wreaking havoc on livelihoods and ecosystem. And the amount of plastic residues in the ocean is so large that it's called the seventh continent, and at this rate, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean. Clearly, the human race is in grave danger, and the only way to change the narrative is to face reality and stop using plastic at all costs. Keep in mind, every action counts.